Hello, dear friends. This is Roy Olson again, speaking to you from Apavia Ministries in uh, Romania. And uh, thinking today about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Today, baptism in the Holy Spirit is uh, primarily a Pentecostal experience, and by that I mean uh, normally spoken of and taught of within what we call Pentecostal churches. We have the Assemblies of God, we have Church of God, we have uh, International Pentecostal Holiness Convention, I believe it is, and uh, many others, wonderful uh, groups. And uh, I indeed have uh, been and am part of uh, one of those uh, Pentecostal groups even though my wife is very Baptist. The thoughts concerning this baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's also referred to as the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's uh, primarily based in uh, the second chapter of Acts that uh, they were all in one accord in one place and uh, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and a cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them, and they all began to speak in other tongues. And uh, these other tongues seem to have been understood by people who were gathered and heard and understood in their several uh, languages. Then the Bible goes on to speak about different uh, times where uh, it seems that people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And uh, usually it was because they heard them speaking in other tongues. Now indeed, I uh, have and do regularly speak in other tongues, pray in other tongues, and uh, worship in other tongues. Not only that way, but uh, certainly that way is included. Uh, however, I, I recognize deeply the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit into uh, non-Pentecostal groups and people, including my own wife, a very fine, fine woman uh, filled with the Spirit of God. In fact, after we were married, uh, uh, very often I would kind of fall asleep, uh, kind of speaking, praying, worshiping, whatever I do in other tongues. And it seems that's the first time she heard me do that in uh, that place and so on. And uh, she began to laugh at me uh, because she had never experienced or heard that, nor was it something that she expected as I was falling asleep. Be that as it may. I was a pastor of a Pentecostal church, and I remember uh, one night about we called people forward who wanted to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And people responded, and indeed, uh, about 13 of them all began to speak in other tongues. When one began, it was like uh, it uh, went over to the other, and another, and another, and another, and another, and uh, soon it was quite a sight, quite a sound, quite an event. And so we pronounced them baptized in the Holy Spirit. However, there was something within me, my heart smote me. And uh, it seemed that God spoke to me and said, Roy, you know better than that. Well, I certainly did. And what do I mean by that? I mean that those people who came forward were, were coached, were, we would say, counseled or helped 
into what we call the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, we said things like, the Holy Spirit is already within you. And that's true. And the tongues are already in you because the Holy Spirit is already there. Well, uh, I question that now and then. And uh, then they were encouraged to speak out whatever comes to them. Just uh, speak out, speak out. And I guess if they were cartoon characters, you know, the Scooby Dooby and the Yabba Dabba Doo will do. But that's a joke. That's not the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But I remember as a youth, uh, many tried to help me to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit because I was kind of a late bloomer. And uh, one of the reasons why I was a late bloomer, what I was taught to seek the giver and not the gift. In other words, I was to re seek uh, God himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The focus was seek Jesus, desire him, want to be like him, and uh, allow him to shape me, mold me into his image. And uh, in his time, in his way, should he choose, he could give me any gift that he wanted, including the least of the gifts, according to the Apostle Paul's description of speaking in other tongues. Well, indeed, I, I never succumbed to the counseling, helping, uh, speak it faster, speak it louder, and yes, that's the tongues. Nothing of that sort at all. I was in a congregation just worshiping God, and uh, I began to speak in tongues unaided, uh, uncoached, and um, I never will question whether I made it up or whether God just gave me that gift and I began to speak in other tongues. And indeed, that was November 15th, 1963. And uh, I'm speaking to you today <clears throat> in uh, November of 2014, so that's quite some years ago. So recently I was in a Pentecostal church here in Romania, and I heard that a lot of people were baptized in the Holy Spirit during a, a short time devoted to seeking the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I was absolutely thrilled. I thought that was absolutely great. <clears throat> but what bothered me was that there didn't seem to be any evidence in the lives of those young people who were supposedly baptized in the Holy Spirit. I mean, I saw no difference, no evidence of having been baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was like the way they were before, it was the way they were after, in terms of passion, in terms of desire, in terms of outward uh, indications of worship, in terms of way to sing. Uh, you know, I just didn't see any. Now, I wasn't particularly inspecting but it was just something that I noticed, but I assumed that the evidences of the baptism in the Holy Spirit would come out in a different place at a different time, and that was fine with me. But then my, my nephew, Christy, he uh, encouraged me, uh, prodded me, and drove me to one of those sessions where people were gathered for the specific reason of receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so I went. And uh, what I saw there deeply disappointed me. The bottom dropped out. Why? Well, what I saw there were men who were spe specifically there and somehow trained to coach people, counsel them, help them into receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And if anybody seemed to 
to be more passionate in their prayer and their seeking God, they would somehow converge on that person. And although they were speaking in the Romanian language, the sense that I got was, speak it faster, speak it louder. Yes, that's it, that's it. Faster, faster, louder, louder. And they called that the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, I'm sure people are helped. And I know that many do find a release. They're introverted or, or for whatever reason, um, never uh, have spoken in other tongues until somebody comes along like that. But dear friends, that is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit that was experienced anywhere in the Bible, not in the book of Acts, nor it is encouraged anywhere in the Bible, at least not that I know of. There is a baptism in the Holy Spirit, but the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is an infilling of the Spirit of God into the human being and that is manifested in spirit-filled living, spirit-filled thinking, spirit-filled serving, a, a life transformed because what we're talking about is God the Father, God the Son, and now God, God the Spirit coming in a greater measure, a fuller measure, and supposedly taking greater possession of an individual. And the Bible indicates that that is specifically for, for prayer, for service, uh, and for uh, witnessing. Um, Tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. And so those who would level a criticism on uh, us, Pentecostal people, for uh, some of the excesses of the uh, uh, so-called spirit-filled life, I think uh, have, have a measure of truth, and I think we need to listen to that. There is a genuine baptism in the Holy Spirit, and it's something deeply to be desired and sought after, and whether it is evidenced by speaking in tongues immediately or later or never, that is not the main issue of being filled with the Holy Spirit. What is the main issue? It is being filled with the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit taking greater residence within the heart and life and soul of the human being and his job, one of the things that he uh, does when he comes into our life is to convict us of sin, to help us to turn away from unrighteousness and ungodly deeds, and uh, indeed to reveal the person of Jesus Christ in a greater way to us. So he doesn't bring attention to himself. It's not uh, praise to the Holy Spirit, although he does merit praise as much as God does, because he is God. But he brings honor and glory to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are my thoughts today, and I encourage you, seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and let God do it in his way, in his time. Do not seek to speak in tongues. Seek the giver. And I end with this little illustration of uh, guests came to the party to celebrate the birth of uh, the new prince. And so as people came into the castle, they threw their coats unknowingly on what they perceived as a place to lay down their coats. And so they were there to celebrate the birth of the prince. 
But where they lay their coats was the crib where the prince lay. And the prince suffocated at the very event in which he was to be celebrated. Let it not be so amongst us, but let the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit be of such a nature that they change the world and in one day 5,000 were added to the church. God bless you. My name is Roy. Until next time, amen.